tonight I'd like to talk about some of the research and development efforts we've been undertaking uh, over the past year, predominantly to do with uh, Unreal Engine. So as David just explained, Unreal Engine provides a number of capabilities uh, for building information modeling applications. Uh, these capabilities we know our customers are very interested in, and they're also ones that we're interested in for our own platform too. So over the summer, we undertook three R&D projects looking at the different opportunities Unreal Engine provides uh, to our platform. So we created a new plugin for Unreal Engine. We created a pixel streaming version of our plan base uh, platform, and we prototyped a geometry streaming solution in Unreal 5. So the first one is our plugin for Unreal Engine. So the purpose of this is to firstly bring geometry from our platform into Unreal Engine, and secondly, to provide a pointing code to query our web API, typically for information about the model you've just brought in. And the idea is to use 3D Repo as a performant, simple, and importantly, always up-to-date content delivery system. So the end user of the plugin is not the architect, it's your own developers, your own in-house developers. So we're not recreating our viewer here, but rather the plugin is used as a component of your own bespoke apps. And the advantage of this is that you get a simplified workflow taking advantage of all the existing 3D repo integrations. So we use predominantly, uh, so the idea with this is that most use cases will be using runtime data. So you bring in everything, late, the latest version off the web. Uh, but we also offer a workflow using uh, static types brought into the Unreal Editor. So you can maintain the benefits of the 3D repo integrations, but load them into the editor and then convert them into Unreal static meshes where they will work with the Unreal serialization and pack system, allowing you to build standalone applications as well. So I'll talk, uh, let's mention a couple of things about the plugin. So one thing is that because this is meant to be used primarily at runtime in an already built and shipped application, the format of the data we bring in might be a little unexpected. We combine multiple objects into a small number of what we call super meshes. And the idea is that you uh, reduce the amount of CPU load to actually draw these very large scenes because we pre-optimize them. That means that some tasks such as highlighting and selection might be a, a little unexpected in terms of the workflow, but we offer examples, we offer documentation, and as you'll see from our included samples and the plan base viewer I'll talk about next, everything is still possible. You know, we, we offer things like blueprint integration, everything like that too. So the plugin is still in development, but you can get a pre-release version off our website right now. We are constantly making improvements to the performance and usability, so I will be the first to say there may be a couple of rough edges, but the core features are there, and so if you think it could be useful, then please download it, give it a go, and let us know what you think. So the second project we've been working on is a pixel streaming version of PlanBase. PlanBase is our white label platform for communicating planning applications. The idea is that a firm will load their design into a instance of the platform run by a local authority, and because it uses our, our, our standard viewer technology, but with a simplified interface and tool set, you can just give a website a web URL to any stakeholder, including the general public. They can visit this, and just by loading it in their browser on their device, they can explore the plans in detail in their own time and provide feedback. Now, because this runs in the user's local device, this presents a bit of a challenge for very large projects on very weak platforms such as mobiles and tablets. So what we've done is we prototyped a version of plan based using pixel streaming. Now pixel streaming is Unreal Engine's remote rendering solution. So the idea is you have a server with a GPU running a desktop version of the application. In this case, it would be our plan based viewer. Then the user's browser connects to this copy of the Unreal application running, it sends mouse and keyboard input and receives back a stream of rendered frames. So all the heavy lifting is done by the server that you control 
and all the user's device has to do is render a video stream like they were watching YouTube or Vimeo or the like. So to create this, we created a version of our viewer with uh, just the subset of functionality that PlanBase requires in Unreal. We swapped out our native viewer uh, in the front end of our PlanBase portal and connected those two up through a matchmaking server, and we have a remote uh, render streaming viewer. So this, I will say, is a little uh, earlier work than the plugin. So this is not publicly available yet, but even just this week, we worked on making a demo of this available to a potential client. So if you do want to learn more about it, then please get in touch. I'll be happy to talk more. And last, but definitely not least, is our geometry uh, streaming prototype. So I've mentioned a couple of times, and I'm sure if you're familiar with our platform, you'll know that we have a web viewer, and this downloads and renders all of the geometry on the user's device. 99% of our customers are able to view their models fine this way, even though it's quite taxing for some of the larger ones. The web browser is limited, to about, is limited in memory to about three gigabytes. Uh, that's just a limit placed by browser, man, uh, browser developers, and there's no way to raise that. So a small subset of our models simply will not load, no matter how powerful the underlying computer is. Now, there's nothing we can do to raise this limit. The only option you have is to render less, either less of the model or with less detail. Now, we're not the first people to have this problem. Of course, there have been many different uh, solutions proposed over the years. As an example, one way, if I'm looking at a skyscraper far off, I might render a proxy of that with very low detail and only high detail uh, of the geometry that's in front of me. Our solution is to show just as much of the model as we can, but in prioritizing the bits that are surrounding the viewer. So I'll give you a brief overview of how this works. So it kind of operates in four stages. When we load in the model into our database, we, uh, we cluster the objects, uh, as I said, into these, into these super meshes, uh, but we do it based on space. So we gather the geometry for all the objects and build clusters about 10 megabytes in size. And these are, these are size that, for very large models with, say, a couple of million objects, we don't have too many to, of these clusters to handle, but they're also small enough that we can download them easily. We can load them into the engine without stuttering. We then organize these into a tree, and then we give that tree to the client, and then at runtime, the client calculates a list of the importance of seeing each of these individual clusters of geometry, and then we just load as many as we can. Anything below an arbitrary threshold, we load into memory or leave in memory. Anything that's above the threshold, we unload or we leave out. And this allows you to, uh, to ex conceivably explore arbitrarily sized models. So I will say something about this video, and that's that we've deliberately set this up to kind of show this working. Uh, as I said, the majority, vast majority of our clients' models do load in our existing route viewer using techniques like the super meshing and the various optimizations we employ. We can, we can show pretty large models within that three gigabyte limit. Uh, so our hope is that when this is implemented properly, Users can navigate around this. It will load and unload in the background, but they will barely see any, if any, difference at all. Uh, so we implemented this over about a month or so in Unreal Engine 5. Uh, UE5 was a great platform to, to prototype this in. Uh, the iteration time was very important for getting this done. This, however, is very early work, uh, even earlier than plan base. Uh, so there's going to be quite a bit of development to do before this works its way into our platform. But based on our evaluation with this, uh, we're pretty hopeful. So that's what we've been working on. Um, I hope you saw something there that might be helpful for your own projects. Uh, if you want to talk about anything you've seen, get some more technical detail, or even if you're just using Unreal for your own projects, I would very much like to speak with you. So please uh, find me after this or get in touch via email. Otherwise, thanks very much for your attention, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your evening.